Today we're taking a look at another encounter set from our friends at Reaper Miniatures. This is from their Reaper Bones 5 Escape from Pizza Dungeon Kickstarter. It is called Dwarf King's Crypt. And this was a set voted on by our Patreon backers, actually. We did a full unboxing of the Reaper minis from that Kickstarter in a video you can see in the eye in the corner of your screen right there. You'll have to let me know if there's anything in there that you're also eager to see. We are in the process of reorganizing our Patreon to make sure that we can keep up with everything, but that's still a place where you can come and support us and vote on which products you wanna see us review on the channel. I really dig encounter sets like this one, which come with minis and scattered terrain. They really lend themselves to storytelling, and we'll talk about several different ways you can use this set in your adventures. First though, I've got something a little bit different for you. Our sponsor, Hit Point Press, is running a Kickstarter called Scrounge Craft for a series of fantasy art jigsaw puzzles. Each puzzle is 1,000 pieces and measures 24 inches square. They're made from black core, 100% recycled paperboard. You can get Gaia in Bloom by Omar Rayan, Scorched Lotus by Donato Giancola, Twisted Maelstrom by Greg Hildebrandt, and Walk of Ages by Milivaj Saren. Forgive me for butchering your names, I'm so sorry. These four puzzles are available as a limited run and once they are gone, they are gone. Pick up some puzzles to enjoy with your friends and family. Check out the Kickstarter at gg.scroungecraft.com or find the link in the doohickey down below. Reaper provides some background lore for this set, which you can use or modify to make your own story. They tell of the wise Durnan Bronzebeard who ruled the deep fortress of Koladar years ago. Sadly, he was stricken with madness and struck down his entire family and his closest thanes. He just walked the halls, murdering everyone in sight until he was finally struck down by his surviving kin. Thereafter, the fortress was cursed and abandoned, but now, centuries later, King Bronzebeard's descendants Descendants have ventured back to the haunted fortress to reclaim their legacy. Each of the figures has been given a name here. You have Baron, Torin, Boren, and Dagon Bronzebeard, plus Asgar and Volgar Swift Axe. You also get minis of the Ghost of King Durnan Bronzebeard and three Dwarven Zombie Thanes. The scattered terrain here is also really interesting. You get a large dwarven statue, a translucent ever-living flame that you might be able to throw a little LED underneath, and King Durnan's ledger. I put old Volgar Swift Axe in here to give you a sense of the scale of these items. And of course, that ledger could be reused as an old mage's spell book or some ancient tome that your party has been sent to read or recover. You also get this really cool archway. Honestly, I think you could use this in a ton of different ways. Its style isn't super specific, so you can make it in an entrance into the Dwarven Tomb or an Elf Gate for your Pathfinder games or honestly a gateway for your Starfinder or other sci-fi games too. I dig the runes that are written on it and some of the other items that we have in this set which lend a sense of magical power to the various items. And again, we have a dwarf here for scale. And here is the King's Tomb itself. You'll notice again the runes carved around it. Now, of course, that isn't meant to be the body itself on top of the tomb, but a sculpture of the monarch, presumably inside. And what's fun about it is that you can indeed open the tomb and inside you'll find the decaying remains of a dwarf. Honestly, he is in remarkably good shape for someone who died centuries ago. A gentle repose spell must linger inside the coffin or something. If you'd rather have something else inside the tomb, you can remove the little body insert. Here's what he looks like compared to the sculpture on the lid. It's pretty gross, actually, and definitely not something we typically see in our other mini sets. These Dwarven corpses. But here is the entire set together, all the minis, all the terrain. It's a pretty versatile set here. The arch, the book, the statue, the flame, so many items that you can use in a lot of different settings. And the minis too. When you have undead encounters, why not make some of them dwarf zombies? If you're curious about how the minis here look next to our usual WizKids minis, here you can see some comparisons. The proportions may be a little bit different, but they're certainly to the same scale, and I think they would be perfectly fine to mix and match them on your table. In just a minute, I'll show you some examples of what all the figures look like when they're painted up nicely. Not by me, by, by really good painters from the Reaper community. I've been trying to think of adventures that feature dwarven tombs, and I think there's a lot of them. The sixth level of Dungeon of the Mad Mage has a dwarven tomb just like this. Princess of the Apocalypse, an adventure that we don't talk about very much, has a side trek called Halls of the Hunting Axe that take you into a dwarven tomb where you can find a magical axe called Orc Splitter. The same adventure has a location called the Tomb of the Moving Stones, also made by dwarves. 
Tales from the Awning Portal has an adventure called The Forge of Fury, which features a dwarven tomb. In Pathfinder, there's an adventure called Giant Slayer for first edition that features the tomb of Nargrim Steelhand, which holds a very important magical item for that adventure. And there's a Pathfinder Society trilogy of one-shots called Glories of the Past, in which you'll explore a buried dwarven sky citadel. That is also for first edition. I'm sure I'm missing some other examples of dwarven tombs and pre-written adventures, so if any come to your mind, let me know in the comment section down below. But you can totally take this set and just make it an encounter all by itself. And it's a great way to give out a magical item that you want your PCs to be able to get, if they earn it, of course. Now, I promised you some pictures of this set all painted up. These are all taken from the Reaper forums. First, we have a few examples. It's painted up by a user named Lexomatic. It has very cool work here. I love it. Now let me show you a series of pictures by someone known as The Peasant, who has done a phenomenal job of painting up this set. It's one thing to see a completely unpainted set like this, like I've shown you today, but something else entirely to see it all painted and ready to hit your table. These Reaper sets are a great, inexpensive way to practice your painting skills. I still do want to do some painting videos for you, but honestly, there's a ton of great painting content out there. And you should check out the great British Brush Off show by our good friends at the Band of Badgers. I on the show once, and I am trying to weasel myself on for another future episode if I can do it. The Dwarf King's Crypt by Reaper is available now for between 30 and 50 bucks. Just for reference, as part of the Kickstarter, it was a $20 add-on. So if you've ever wanted to pick up some cool Reaper sets, try not to miss those Kickstarters to get some great prices. I always try to share them with you on our Twitter feed when they come up. You can also find our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts right here next to me. We give you news on those as well. Also, go pick yourself up some awesome puzzles to put together with your friends and family by visiting gg.scroungecraft.com or by using using the link below the video. Using our links lets them know that we sent you so we can keep on making content for you. And if you do enjoy what we do here, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and leaving us nice comments are an easy way to help us grow and improve. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.